Okay, so normally I only do videos at the time I'm selling, but uh, I'm so in love this time that I'm doing it soon after after buying. So uh, this is the uh, the limited edition 500 M3. Uh, literally, it's one of about uh, 120 uh, with this uh, this this special Imola red colour that hasn't been available since the uh, the E46. Uh, beautiful colour to see. It's a flat red, no metallic. Uh, it's a fairly standard car, except it's got the black tailpipes on this one. Uh, obviously, it's got a, uh, a BMW carbon uh, spoiler on it. The carbon roof, which is standard on on all the uh, the M3s. It's got the high gloss line black uh, trim, and it's got the black alloys. All of this is how the the limited 500 comes. And uh, also, you notice on this car. Uh, this isn't standard, I've got these fitted, these are carbon splitters just to give the front a little bit more aggression. So it's essentially very similar to the standard M3 in terms of uh, performance. Well, it is the same, but the, uh, but the actual look of the car is, is really different. It's really a special car. The paintwork is just beautiful in the, in the flesh. Oh yeah, and it's got the, the high gloss line black front grille on this car as well. So it's a, it's a, a very aggressive front profile. Uh, it's got the bi-xenons. Uh, with the, uh, the literally the uh, the up down left right swivel on them, uh, but this car's also got a turn light as well, just like the Jaguar XKR does, uh, so that when you, you're at slow speeds and you're doing a, uh, a near enough full lock on the steering wheel, you get a left or right light comes on as well and illuminates the side of the car. You've also got these uh, rather nifty wing mirrors on this car. They're actually not connected here, and they they swing up just like they do on on most of the BMWs. In terms of technology, it's pretty loaded. This car has got everything from the upgraded stereo to uh, you'll notice in here it's got the uh, well, you probably can't see on this camera, but it's got the uh, it's got a camera built into there as well as a whole bunch of other sensors. So, this car's got things like uh, high beam assist. So, if you're going on country roads and you're giving it the beans, um, it will automatically dip the uh, the high beam when it senses another car's coming or when you're entering into uh, uh, a sort of a back into a town or village environment. So beautiful car, absolutely rocked my world this car, I've never been into BMWs but uh, uh, I have to say this car has totally, totally changed my perception. It's just the way the gearbox changes. Okay, so we're going to have a little sound of this. I could listen to that all day. The uh, the M3 500 limited edition has just uh, 
arrived in the fleet, complete with uh, laser etched limited edition piano black veer wood, and this lovely, I think it's called Novillo hand stitched leather. It's, it's absolutely super soft, this. Really nice, it's pretty much standard apart from that. It's got a few trick bits and bobs on it, uh, some carbon fiber in addition to the carbon fiber roof, uh, as well as uh, uh, some, some front splitters uh, and a rear carbon spoiler uh, that I'll show you in a moment. So apart from that, it's fairly, fairly standard. It's got the black high gloss line, as well as uh, it's got the, uh, the black high gloss BMW M3 alloy. So it's, uh, it's quite a, a unique looking M3. It's got all the normal sort of features. Uh, we've got uh, really lovely integrated sort of uh, uh, SIM card into it. So we've got live traffic information with satellite mapping. It's all 3D. Uh, that's all just controlled via the, uh, the, uh, the, eye, the eye controller here or whatever they call them, these little circular things down here. Um, we've got all the normal sort of systems in there. The, uh, the, the menu in there has got everything from Office where I can read my text messages uh, through to uh, all the online connected stuff. So for example, we've got uh, uh, BMW Online. We can just go into that. Uh, we can look at everything from the weather today to uh, other connected services. For example, I can go into, uh, into Google. I can send a destination via a, a map on my phone. Uh, and then send that through to the car, which is absolutely fantastic. If I've got a number of journeys to do, I literally just send it through to the car, I accept it on there, and uh, and off we go. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I was just gonna try and show you the weather, but uh, there we go, look at that. All comes up, the uh, the Sims is fairly fast. It's not, it's not as good as something like 3G, to be honest. Most of the time I do things, uh, uh, I do things on my phone rather than uh, through the car, as you can imagine. Uh, but uh, it still is a pretty cool, pretty cool feature to have. Uh, this particular car, it's got uh, got DAB, and the sound quality of it is absolutely fantastic. It, it really is. You know, it's it's mind blowing. I've had some really good stereos in cars before, but the DAB in this, uh, it's a uh, Harman Kardon system. Uh, it's got a full range of speakers, tweeters dedicated sub as you'd imagine um, you know it, it's pretty much top of the class for for the sort of thing you're gonna get a car and certainly in this price range it should be about a two thousand pound option um, connectivity wise just plug your iPhone straight in do have also a uh, an iPhone snapping connector but anyone who's had a BMW before will realize there's just a myriad of top tick boxes that you got to tick to make sure that you get your uh, something that will work not only for your phone calls, but also to play your, your music through. So you can have uh, um, you can have on the iPhone settings, you can't do it at the moment because I'm not connected, but uh, uh, you can actually have things like cover art come through, which is, uh, which is really cool, but you must tick the right boxes. Really take care to research that if you're about to buy a BMW. You tick one wrong box and that's it. You cannot have your iPhone connected through, which is uh, what's happened to me here. Love this uh, practicality of this car. Um, you know, I've got things like the uh, uh, cup holders in the back. This is, believe it or not, a, a special storage pack here. Uh, so it's firmly a four-seater, but my kid's getting here in comfort, and I'm six foot six. Uh, this is the first car that I've had that's so fast, and yet uh, uh, it still takes all my family. Normally, I'm a bit selfish and go for a two-seater or, or something. Uh, so let's let's have a little listen to uh, let's have a little listen to the. Uh, the engine just backing up into my uh, my favorite little sound tunnel here uh, this is a uh this is just gentle acceleration this thing is absolutely astonishing in fact I'm just gonna go outside and do it properly technology wise um, the car is is it's it's pretty good I mean it's uh it funnily enough for those of you that have seen my uh, my my review of my Volvo S80, the technology is probably in many areas not quite up to uh, to what I had in that vehicle, which is surprising. But what they have done is is just little engineering touches everywhere that I find and and they delight me to be honest. So you know even little things like having this the side of my armrest, which uh, I'm always using on long journeys, it just slides forward for adjustment. The actual 
uh, side supports on the M3, these are actually adjustable, so um, they, can, they can adjust in and out and grip you nice and tightly. You've got full lumbar support that goes up, down, inflate, deflate. You've got a wide range of options and uh, uh, you've even got the uh, the nice M logo embossed uh, into the, the, the vehicle. Apart from that, it's actually quite subtle. The only other place you'll find it is uh, is on the, the front uh, and then on the uh, the outside of the vehicle as well. There's a, there's a, a couple of different badges. One nice bit of technology, you've got the, the cruise control by the way down, down down here somewhere there we go it's it's pretty good it takes a bit of getting used to it it's slightly different to the the way that most cruise controls i've used at work but what it doesn't have is the radar option i really miss that on the motorway you know we've all got to do motorway journeys and and having radar is uh it really is a good feature that uh, that i miss a great deal um on the actual uh the, the steering column we've got the the phone uh we've got voice control we've got volume uh, here we've got sort of source select and we've got the lovely M button which when I press that takes the car you can see the little M light has just come on there and all of the M functionality is configured from settings so I'm struggling a bit here with the Sun so uh, on here you can go in select M drive which it's saying select at the moment and you can configure everything in here so you can configure the gearbox in terms of its responsiveness, uh, the traction control, uh, the way that the, uh, the, the engine power is applied, which basically is, is just how much um, of the throttle you need to press down to, to get the uh, response from the engine. So it's the, the throttle's got 20% more in sport mode in terms of I need to press 20% lighter to get the same amount of throttle. It really does make it feel sportier. And there's an awful lot of debate on the internet about M3s and, and people will swear it doesn't and I swear it does. When you're in M mode, there's no doubt when you're doing downshifts, the blips really do bark that much more out of you and, and it, it sounds absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the shift lights are superb. You, I can't show them to you right now, I don't believe. Uh, there's only way I can do that, stationary. But they, uh, uh, around the top of the dial here, you can just about see, in fact, you come up quite nicely on the phone, you can see the, uh, the, the, the LEDs there and they go all the way from green to amber and finally red when it, it really is at the, the red line. And the red line on this car is eight and a half. It's just phenomenal. Uh, and whenever you think you've got up to the end of the red range, you're probably 3,000 RPM from it. This car just keeps giving and giving. The motor is just unbelievable. Um, it's a really exciting car to drive for that. And one thing, another little engineering function that I love um, is, is the, this, this, this red line here is actually variable. When you first start the car on, the red lines, uh, the orange is somewhere up about five and a half and the, and the red line starts at six. And as the engine gradually warms, it actually comes down here and moves down so you can you can start accessing more of the engine. I love that. I take good care of my cars, you know, I always warm them up thoroughly before using them, but not everybody does, and, and that's a really nice feature. So we've got the uh, we've got the, the, the screen on there. The other thing I just want to show in here, which is I you know, you've got all sorts of different function in, in there, but one thing I think is really cool is the vehicle status so on here I look and look at everything from my flat tire monitoring system confirming the tire pressure I can check the oil level uh, which will sit there and it, it will it will calculate that if it needs be because I've actually been sitting here idling for a while it's actually already calculated it so there's no need to do that again uh, determine whether or not a, uh, a service is required which it's not uh, and, uh, and and any other sort of functions about the car so love that that interface and, and the way that that works yeah, okay. one other thing I had to show about this car uh, you can see that I've got it in M mode at the moment so uh, currently we have got power and we're on the slightly firmer setting of the uh, of the, um, the, the, the the magnetic the variable suspension I don't like the hard version I think possibly that is really is a track only option this car is actually the first one that I've I've had adjustable suspension where I can genuinely feel a, a noticeable difference on the road and, and it really does change the manners from a slightly firmer than the normal as you would expect vehicle uh, being an M3 uh, but still very comfortable in its standard off mode all the way through to pretty bone jarring on the uh, on UK roads with the the, the full sort of uh, sport mode if you like power button is on there 
one thing that I also love about the, uh, I don't know whether this is on all BMWs or specifically the M3, it's probably a, a, an M function, is the ability to set the responsiveness of the gearbox. So when you're after a leisurely drive, you just dial it down low uh, and the, the gears will sort of change up earlier. Um, they'll also change a bit more slowly. When you, um, when you dial it right up high, the gearbox is instantly going to change as soon as you start pressing on the throttle. I love the fact that, that with a, an automatic gearbox, you have that kind of control. Otherwise, you're at the mercy of however well it was designed by the, the car manufacturer. This way, you can just set it to whatever you like, and I love it. The SMG gearbox in this thing is just a total work of art. I'm trying to show you here the, 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 the paddles that we've got behind. These are, are, are machined out of solid metal billies. They, they are really really lovely to hold normally you get crappy plastic paddles in most of the cars that i've had these are metal they feel good and when you pull back on either one of those the gear change is instant to the point where if anyone's seen that cool top gear thing where they get uh, um the renault f1 car to uh, to play out the national anthem it's almost like that except you can't play a tune on it but the the sound just goes instantly do 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 and then down again it is just a work of art you know it's what an amazing car so, uh, yeah, get one. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna have a little sound of this. I could listen to that all day. Yeah, when I get a chance, this is going to be my next review. It's my 1500cc V-Twin Victory. It's kind of like a, an alternative to Harley. Sounds like a Spitfire going down the street. Absolutely love it. That's a fun thing. I'll get a little review up of that when i got time. And probably also, actually, this awesome uh, Osset... Uh, uh, electric trials bike. This is a, a really, really serious bit of kit that uh, uh, the kids have a field day with.